Nozick illustrates and defends the entitlement theory in a famous thought experiment involving the basketball player Will Chamberlain. Imagine a society in which the distribution of wealth fits a particular structure or pattern favored by a non-entitlement conception of justice suppose, to keep things simple, that it is an equal distribution, and call it DL1. Nozick's opponent must of course grant that this distribution is just, since Nozick has allowed the opponent himself to determine it. Now suppose that among the members of this society is Wilt Chamberlain, and that he has as a condition of his contract with his team that he will play only if each person coming to see the game puts 25 cents into a special box at the gate of the sports arena, the contents of which will go to him. Suppose further that over the course of the season, 1 million fans decide to pay the 25 cents to watch him play. The result will be a new distribution, D2, in which Chamberlain now has $250,000, much more than anyone else a distribution which thereby breaks the original pattern established in D1. Now is D2 just? Is Chamberlain entitled to his money? The answer to these questions, Nozick says, is clearly, yes. For everyone in D1 was, by hypothesis, entitled to what he had, there is no injustice in the starting point that led up to D2. Moreover, everyone who gave up 25 cents in the transition from D to D2 did so voluntarily, and thus has no grounds for complaint, and those who did not want to pay to see Chamberlain play still have their 25 pay 2 cents, so they have no grounds for complaint either. But then no one has any grounds for, a complaint of injustice, and thus there is no injustice. What this shows, in Nozick's view, is that all non-entitlement theories of justice are false. For all such theories claim that it is a necessary condition for a distribution's being just that it have a certain structure or fit a certain pattern, but the Wilt Chamberlain example which can be reformulated so that D1 is, instead of an egalitarian distribution, a distribution according to hard work, desert, or whatever, shows that a distribution, such as D2, can be just even if it doesn't have a particular structure or pattern. Moreover, the example shows that, liberty upsets patterns, that allowing individuals freely to use their holdings as they choose will inevitably destroy any distribution advocated by non-entitlement theories, whether they be socialist, egalitarian liberal, or some other theory of distribution. And the corollary of this is that patterns destroy liberty, that attempts to enforce a particular distributional pattern or structure over time will necessarily involve intolerable levels of coercion, forbidding individuals from using fruits of their talents, abilities, and labor as they see fit. As Nozick puts it, the socialist society would have to forbid capitalist acts between consenting adults. This is not merely a regrettable side effect of the quest to attain a just distribution of wealth, it is a positive injustice, for it violates the principle of self-ownership. Distributive justice, properly understood, thus does not require a redistribution of wealth, indeed it forbids such a redistribution. Accordingly, the minimal state, far from being inconsistent with the demands of distributive justice, is in fact the only sure means of securing those demands.